Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this carbon fiber water bottle holder that you see here. This is something you can attach to a bicycle or you can attach it to, well, whatever you want, or in this case, a wheelchair. Keep watching if you want to see how I built it. Four months ago, a friend of mine was hit by a car while riding his bicycle, and he suffered a lot of injuries, and, and at the end of it all, he became paraplegic. He no longer has use of his legs. So he's in a wheelchair. I approached him and I said, hey man, I've got a composite shop, and if you ever need anything that's made out of carbon fiber, let me know, I'd love to help you out. And he said, well, actually there is one thing I would love to have. I'd love just to have a water bottle holder that attaches to my wheelchair, and it'd be pretty awesome if it was made out of carbon fiber. And I said, done, let's get this thing going. So I took the measurements I needed. It looks like there are two different kinds of water bottles. There's a traditional three inch water bottle, which is what you find on most, uh, most bicycle water bottle holders. They're designed for a three inch diameter bottle. Or there's more like your Nalgene bottle, which is a little bit bigger. It's about three and a half inches in diameter. I asked him what he preferred. He said he wanted the smaller diameter, so that's what we're gonna make it to, to fit. The other thing it's gotta have is it's gotta clamp onto the frame of his wheelchair somehow. So my plan is to make that as a separate part that gets later bonded onto the water bottle. Uh, uh, Water bottle, what water bottle, water bottle, water bottle, water bottle holder. Rather than trying to make the entire thing all as one integral molded in piece, the next thing I need is some kind of a form or mold to make the carbon fiber water bottle holder. Got it right that time. For that, what we're going to use is a water bottle itself. Simplest solution I could think of. I'm going to wrap the carbon fiber around this using some vacuum bagging film as a as a barrier so it doesn't stick, and then it's going to be the exact right diameter. Let's go ahead and get started. I started by sticking the vacuum bagging film to the bottle using clear cellophane tape. Picking slits around the bottom allowed me to wrap the bottom around without having too many wrinkles. It made for a much nicer finish. I then applied two layers of wax, carefully buffing in between each layer. Now the question of how many plies I want to have on it. I want it to have just a little bit of flex, but not a ton. So this is where I like to keep a few pieces of different, different layups around that I can feel and feel how flexible they are. It's perfect for this sort of thing. This is one ply right here, super floppy, definitely not stiff enough. This is two plies. One of them is a 090, the other one's a 45 degree. So it's not quite as stiff as, as two plies of 090. And it's stiffer, but I think I want it a little bit stiffer still. Um, over here, this is five plies. This is just way, way stiffer than we want. Um, so I think what we want to do is we want to do about three plies, and I want them to be 0, 090 plies. Quick tip, if you're not sure how much epoxy to mix for a project, weigh your fabric. The weight of the fabric plus about 10 or 20 percent, that's how much total epoxy you're going to need to finish that layup. It's important to put down a generous coat of epoxy before you lay down your first ply and make sure there are no air bubbles. I found that when I do this, I usually get a very clean, pinhole free surface on the tool side of my part. My camera timed out so I missed some parts, but I applied some peel ply and then you can see me here applying perforated release film over the top of the peel ply. I followed it up with two layers of paper towels to act as a breather, and I taped them down to make sure they didn't move. Next I made my own vacuum bag by using some vacuum bagging film and some bag sealant tape, or BST. I laid my vacuum tube down with some paper towel around it connecting it to the layup. You need to make sure there's a clear air path all the way from the vacuum to every part of your layup. Another strip of BST over the top of the vacuum tube allows me to seal it perfectly. Once it's cured, you can remove all of the vacuum bagging material, the breather, and the perforated film, but leave the peel ply on for now because it'll protect the part. 
pulling the part off the tool was a lot harder than it shows here. And it probably would have been a lot easier had I not taped my vacuum bagging material to the bottle in the first place. Now I'm sketching out the design for the water bottle. I start with a folded in half sheet of paper because I want it to be symmetric. I wanted this design to look similar to the water bottle holders that I've seen on high performance bicycles. So that's what I used for my inspiration. After a trial fit, I liked the way it looks, so I went ahead and taped it down and I traced the template with a silver sharpie, which shows up really well on carbon fiber. But once you start cutting, the dust goes everywhere and it makes it hard to see the lines, so I found it's helpful to follow it up with a layer of masking tape that follows your outline. After rough cutting with a Dremel and a cutoff wheel, I get a little bit closer to my lines with a drum sander. And then to clean it up the rest of the way, I just sand it by hand with some 220 grit. And with that, we're ready for our test fit. I'm pretty happy with it, so I went ahead and pulled the peel ply to get ready for putting on our mounts. Now I just need to figure out how to attach this to the wheelchair. Now you could probably argue I should have figured this out before I started, probably could have made a difference in how easily it was to do this, but I hadn't figured it out and sometimes you just need to start the project and let it evolve as you go. So now that we're at this point, I've got an idea for how to do this. I found these universal mounts on Amazon and I'll throw a link in the description, but these are designed to be able to mount to, to any size tube up to about two and a half inches. All I need to do is screw it to my water bottle holder. But because of the way we molded this, if I just screw it to it, then that screw head is going to be in the way of the water bottle when you put the water bottle in. So we need a solution for that. In addition, I'd like to reinforce the area where the bolt is going to go so that it distributes the stress pretty evenly and you don't have it crack free later on. Here's what I think we should do. I started by cutting out some 1 inch squares out of some 8 inch stock material that I keep lying around. This is why it's kind of nice to have some stock material in different thicknesses just sitting around ready for projects like this. I measured and marked the center to drill a hole for the screws. I then hot glued these to some quarter inch material so I could match drill them and have the holes line up exactly. Because carbon fiber has a weave to it, I found that when I drill, sometimes it'll get sucked into the trough between the pinholes and your hole won't end up where you want it to. So I hot glued on a bushing to help guide the drill bit at least to get the hole started. Clamping your workpiece to a block of wood helps keep it from splintering out when the drill bit reaches the other side. And this is going to create some heat, so dip your drill bit in some water after every few seconds of drilling. And I didn't show it here, but after drilling these holes and pulling off the 8th inch stock, I drilled out the quarter inch stock to a diameter bigger than the head of the screws that are bolting in. You'll see why I did this in a little bit. I centered each block square and then cleaned it up really, really well with alcohol to get it ready for bonding. Wait for the alcohol to dry completely before bonding. This only took a couple of grams of epoxy, and I added a little bit of cabasil to make it more of a paste for bonding these blocks together. To make sure that the holes were lined up after I bonded it, I put the screws in, 
You can see how the screw head goes through the hole in the quarter inch plate, but not the eighth inch plate. I left the screws in while clamping it, and then after clamping it, I pulled the screw out, cleaned it off thoroughly with some alcohol, and then used a cotton swab, again with some alcohol, to clean any epoxy out of the hole. I squared up the blocks once more, and then, to make the blocks match the curvature of the water bottle holder, I wrapped some 120 grit around my water bottle and used that to sand a curved shape into each block, so that it matched perfectly to the water bottle holder. Unfortunately, there was one wrinkle in my layup. If it needed the strength, I'd either start over or sand it down and put new plies down. But in this case, it's plenty strong, so I went ahead and sanded it down with some sandpaper glued to a foam block. And while I was at it, I sanded the peel ply texture off of the rest of the part. Next, I used sandpaper to bevel the edges of the blocks. This not only looks better, but it also prevents a stress riser from happening on the edges of the block, where it might crack and break free later. After thoroughly cleaning everything with alcohol, we're ready to do our final bond. I lined them up carefully where I wanted them to go, and marked the locations. And then I mixed epoxy with a little bit of cabosil, just like I did before, for paste bonding these on. and then clean up any squeeze out. I used the existing holes in the blocks to drill out the final hole. And then I used the 3 8 bit from the other side to go just past the first few plies to open up the hole. You don't want to go all the way through or else the screw will just slide all the way through the hole. A little sandpaper to clean up any fiber breakout and we're ready to test fit our screws. I once more sanded down any shiny spots that I saw, and after a thorough cleaning with alcohol, we're ready for our clear coat. For this, I like to use Helmsman Spar Urethane. It's a rattle can clear coat. I'll throw a link to where you can get it online in the description. After letting it dry, we're ready for final assembly. And it's done! Let's test it out! To test it out, I strapped it to one of the cymbal stands on my drum set. It was the closest thing I could think of to a wheelchair. And the moment of truth? It works! Time to go give it to Austin. What's up, man? How's it going? Alright. How are you? Good. This is my brother. This is Justin. How's it going, Justin? Justin, nice this you. is Austin. Whoops. Oh, come on in. Dude, is this? What's this? This is a hand cycle, um, so this is a loaner that I got from the University of Utah to just kind of train with. Okay. Um, until I get my own. Um, so since I'm doing the Salt Lake City Marathon, I needed something to train with. Gotcha. And so they loaned it to me to train with for the winter. When's the race? Sometime in April. I can't remember when. Okay. So, so you got a little time, but that's yeah. what? Well, it's only like three months away. That's not. Yeah. That's actually yeah, not, that not that much time. time. <laughs> no, it's not. To go from zero to marathon. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm excited though. Cool. Well, you ready? Want to see it? Yeah, let's see it. I put it in this really, really nice box that once held light bulbs. Oh, very nice. Yes. There you go. Pull that out. Dude, this is sick. I like it. Nice, it won't hurt the metal. Yep. And then yep, the... It's got the rubber and it grips pretty well, so you should be able to strap it on. And, eight, and I think those, with being able to rotate those, you should be able to mount it pretty much any angle that it needs to go on there. Perfect. It's great. Sweet. I love it. That's so nifty. Wow. So yeah, we'll just clip the Velcro and then... That looks awesome. I really like it. Thank you so much. Very sweet too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Well, hey. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. It was my well, pleasure. Thanks for letting um, me let me do it. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited for it. So thanks again. Let me know how it works out. Okay, we'll do. Cool. Thanks. All right. Yep. All right, we are back in the shop, and that was so cool, so much fun to be able to do that. Thank you, Austin, for letting me do this project, and thank you guys for coming along the journey with me. One more thing before we go, you saw in the video that Austin is getting back on the road already using a hand cycle instead of a traditional bicycle. However, the one that you saw in the video is only on loan to him for a short while, and if he's gonna compete with it, he's going to eventually need to get his own. Problem is, these are extremely expensive. Even the budget ones are running the thousands of dollars. So to help Austin get there quicker, I'm donating 100% of my income from Patreon for the months of February and March 2020 to help Austin get into a new hand cycle for when he starts to compete. If you're interested in donating, go ahead and check out the link to my Patreon in the description below. If you only donate just this once for Austin, that is totally okay. Thank you so much for donating. I really appreciate the opportunity to help Austin out, help him get back on the road. And if you'd like to hear Austin's story, I'll throw a link to his blog as well, where you can check out his story, you can follow his recovery, you can see how he's doing as he's getting back on the road using a hand cycle. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.